In this episode, we'll add structure to the bean to create the robo bean. If you haven't seen the bean, structure, or landmarks videos, you might be a little confused with some of the things in this video because we'll be taking the bean and adding structure to it based on the landmarks. So click to watch those now. Why use the robo bean? A few weeks ago, we met the bean. After you're comfortable with the bean, it's time to move on to his friend, robo bean. The robo bean is great because it combines the motion from the bean with 3D form. Now we're able to show the side planes to show rotation and top or bottom planes for tilting and leaning. These drawings are going to be extremely stylized and by no means is it a finished drawing or how I'm saying you should draw. This is however exactly what I'm thinking about when I analyze the form. So showing this simplistic exercise is a great vision into the thought process. It's also just a really good exercise to practice to see and draw three-dimensional form. You should be able to freehand cylinders and boxes from any angle and get the perspective right as I explained in the structure video a few weeks ago. Let's review cylinders and boxes. This exercise is very similar to the bean exercise, except now instead of using balls, we're gonna use boxes. Boxes are a little bit more advanced, but more effective because now you have plane changes to better explain the orientation of the forms. Spheres are not effective in showing perspective, as I explained last week. You can't see a sphere as three-dimensional unless you add tone. Without tone, a sphere is just a circle. A cylinder introduces perspective because it has a plane change at the top and bottom. A box shows even more perspective because it has a plane change from the front to side planes along with the top and bottom planes. Landmarks. Okay, so let's take a look at the details of the robo bean and what exactly the boundaries represent. The top box is the rib cage and a portion of the shoulders. The bottom is the pelvis combined with the butt. Remember those landmarks we went over last week? Well, they're really going to come in handy as you construct the robo bean. Almost every edge or corner falls on a specific area along the body. Let's start at the top. The top front corners of the first box align with this corner on the clavicles. At the bottom, the corners of the 10th ribs indicate the bottom of the box. These four corners give us the front plane of the box. On the back side, the ridge of the spine of the scapula provides the edge between top and back plane. Just stretch that back plane to the length of the rib cage. Sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where those corners are because the rib cage in the back is covered by muscles. But the exact points are not important. Just make sure to get the length and angle correct. The top plane is everything between the scapula and clavicles. You have to ignore the trapezius muscle to see this. This is a very important plane to show when the body is leaning forward or backward towards us. Usually I'll even extend this to the edges of the shoulders, but we'll save that for the mannequinization video. Connect the side planes for the sides of the rib cage, and the bottom plane doesn't matter much. The space between the boxes is filled with guts and other fun stuff. Let's move on to the bottom box. The most useful corners I feel are the aces, the corners on the front of the pelvis. They're extremely important to find the angle of the pelvis. Unfortunately, there aren't any good points to indicate the bottom of the front plane. You'll just have to use your imagination and extend them from the pubic bone. Follow the edge of the iliac crest until the pieces for the side planes. The back plane starts at the pieces and includes the mass of the glutes. The rounded part at the bottom of the glutes is the edge where you can show a bit of a bottom plane. And again, the top plane doesn't matter because of the guts thing. Together, all these points form the two boxes, 
connected by the spine, which moves the boxes. Differences between genders. The proportions are going to vary from person to person. That's why it's good to know what landmarks you're looking for on the body, so that you can analyze those points on the person you're drawing and measure the proportions. Generally, the rib cage and pelvis on a male are about the same width. On a female, the rib cage is thinner and the pelvis is wider. There's variation within genders. Some men have wider hips and some women have broader shoulders. Mentally identifying the body type before you draw it will help. Motion. With the addition of the top, bottom, and side planes, we can show the motion and position of the body with more detail than with the beam. The corners help to show the tilt side to side with the angles from one side to the other. The top and bottom planes help to show the leaning forward or backward. And the side planes help to show twisting. More about the twist. This brings me to an important part about the twist that I forgot to mention in the bean video. I showed with the towel that the overlaps come from the corners that are closer to us. This is true from the side view of the torso, but from front or back, it's actually the opposite. Here's a better explanation for getting the overlaps right. Figure out which side of the body you're seeing completely. The overlaps are the ones parallel to this rhythm. So, if you're looking at the side, then the side plane is being twisted like this. And the front and back plane will wrap back around the side plane. If you're looking at the front plane, then the same thing happens here. But now the side planes wrap behind the front plane and the center line is following the S-curve rhythm. So basically, the overlapping lines are going to follow the rhythm of the plane we're looking at. With the RoboBean, it's actually much easier to see why this happens. Here, the side plane is wrapping behind the front plane. So this edge would overlap this one. On the other side, same thing. The front edge overlaps the back edge. Assignments, critiques, and a giveaway. All right, so the assignment for this lesson is pretty obvious. Just find some poses, plenty available at proco.com slash poses, and draw the robo bean for that pose. You'll probably have a bunch of questions, concerns, mistakes you might have made. So next week, I'll post examples of me drawing the robo bean which hopefully will address some of your questions. Also, keep submitting your exercises for critiques. I'm going to combine the submissions from the bean, structure, landmarks, RoboBean, and mannequinization lessons into one critique video, since all these lessons are related to building forms. So if you want to submit for a critique, do the assignment from this week's lesson, post your drawings on your Facebook page, Tumblr, blog, forum, wherever you like to post your artwork. In your post, make sure to mention this video and include a link to it. Email me and tell me where I can find your drawings. Make sure to follow the guidelines that I describe on proca.com slash critiques. And giveaway time! Three lucky, super awesome, hardworking students who submit for critiques will get free access to the Figure Fundamentals premium videos. Oh yeah! If you want extended versions of this video, and all the other videos from the Figure Fundamentals series, check out proco.com slash figure. There's a bunch of examples of gesture drawings, bean drawings, robo bean, and landmarks from last week. So if you want more content to practice from, check out proco.com slash figure. Or you just click the link here. You, right now, you just click that right now. This is a button. Click the button. I'm going to wait till you click the button. Click the button. Click the button. If you like this video, share the wealth. Tell your friends. Post it on your favorite social network. And click this button here to subscribe to the Proco newsletter if you want to be updated about new videos. Bye-bye! Click the freaking link. 
it's right there. You just click it with your mouse. Unless you're on mobile or iPad or something, then it's not clickable. If you're on the computer, you have no excuse. You have to click the link. I'm going to be here all day until you click. When you click, then the video pauses and then I'm not talking to you anymore. So just click it. Make me stop talking. I can stand here forever. Just click the freaking button. Come on, click it. Click the button. Just click it.